So the area that I'm working in now is we um, involved with others developing what we call clinical pathways for common medical conditions, usually involved in, in uh, at, up until this stage um, in, uh, in hospital admissions. So one of the commonest things that we work in is developing clinical pathways for things like hip replacements, um, uh, TIAs, um, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, common conditions that present commonly to hospitals, public and private hospitals. And we use the support of evidence-based international clinical guidelines to underpin the development of clinical pathways. I think clinical pathways um, and, and working with, with a systematic approach to managing patients has in really a number of positive spin-offs. It A, it, it not standardises it, it's not a, it's not a one size fits all uh, and a, uh, what's the term for it, a, um, a, rigid, a rigid pathway to care, but it assists the carer, uh, the nurses and the doctors, particularly nurses in assisting with documentation. Um, because I think if we still go to, ho if we go to hospital notes today in 2007, we still, we're still writing clinical notes as um, I think Florence Nightingale might have been doing, you know, back a couple of hundred years ago. Um, assisting in the flow of the, the person through the system of the hospital um, and really has great benefits for educating the patient and setting up expectations of care. So that in fact, if you're progressing normally through your care, you will actually be discharged from hospital in three or four or five days and not necessarily have to be in hospital for six, seven or eight days um, um, like, like maybe the expectation was some time ago. Um, I think a lot of things we do in clinical medicine have been, is done, are done because we've always been doing it that way instead of looking at well, what is actually best for the patient and what do we know is the best way. Because actually hospitals can be dangerous places. You know. What a clinical pathway can do is to say, well, I'm, pro I'm confronted with a problem. I'm a GP in a country, a rural area. I'm confronted with a problem with limited resources what do I need to do? And I think that a clinical pathway or guidance material um, can actually assist that um, GP or specialist to make the right decisions at the right time and, and try to more standardise that care uh, for the benefit of the patient. One of the most important things I've learnt over the years in my clinical experiences is, is uh, and I wish I knew this when I was a younger doctor, is that when people come to see me as a doctor, I find that I spend more time listening and not talking and doing. And I have a sort of little saying to myself sometimes, which is, don't just do something, but stand there. Meaning that listen to what the patient's expectations are, the person who's, and, and listen to what they're saying, because that, that's a very important clue as to as, as the way that you can help them, help themselves. And in the work that I do in the, in the bigger picture, um, Managing patients' expectations is a very important part of, of, uh, of, of, of the work I do and there is a lot of scientific evidence to show that actually managing people's expectations helps them to get through those difficult times of illness, injury, uh, hospitalisation, etc. Um, we've often forgotten reassurance in talking to people. We're, we're, um, we're so overwhelmed with medical technology and the great benefits that that can give and MRI scans and all the wonderful blood tests that we can do on people and investigations, but we forget actually sometimes that, that just listening and listening to the real concerns of people uh, and addressing those can be very, very powerful. And, and I have to keep reminding myself of that all the time.